Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Let's Make a Game. As promised, in today's episode we are going to make a random name generator. Now it's only gonna be really a first version of the generator. Of course we are gonna have to make some improvements, but we're gonna lay the foundation for the generator. And it is just an idea I came up with. I'm sure somebody else solved it more elegantly. Let's start up a new game. This is actually a new feature that I implemented. You can see all of the stars are at the moment grayed out. If I hover over a star, you can see unknown and then their random name. Uh, at the moment, I have an admin tool implemented so that I can click a star and it is now being registered as uh, explored. Also, you can see that the name then will be there permanently. So for instance, here we have Bienze and then we have Kekua. Then uh, here we have Alt. Kutz. <laughs> yeah, the names aren't perfect yet and the reason for that is mostly because I haven't distinguished between rare consonants and frequent consonants. So that is the first improvement I'm probably gonna end up changing with the random name generator. But for the time being, those kinds of names are gonna be the result of today's episode. Another thing in relation to the previous episode, I actually also made it so that these statuses get saved. So if I restart the game completely and hit the continue button, you can see all of the previously explored planets are still or suns or stars are still explored. However, with that out of the way, let's dive right into the random name generator. There we go. So here we are within the random name generator script. The script is being called as soon as we load up all of the stars, as soon as we need the names and need to assign them to the star. So it's only being done really when we first start up a new game. Otherwise, of course, the names are being stored in a file and then recalled from there. But with a new game, we want to run this code. So let's first of all initialize a bunch of lists. We are actually gonna do this with lists. So for this example, we're gonna go with two lists. One is gonna be the vowel list, so ds list create, and the second one is gonna be the consonant list. There we go, equals ds list create. So first of all, we want to tell GameMaker to save the memory for these two lists. Next up, let's create the lists, the actual lists. And this is the point where I would suggest you actually make a rare consonant list and a frequent consonant list. So you don't get names such as xxxxuquaquaw. Right, for instance, the letter N we would have uh, more frequently in words and then the letter, I don't know, Y for instance, doesn't occur as often, but we are not gonna make that distinction today just to keep it a little bit simpler. Now, we're gonna start with the vowel list. We want to populate the list with uh, various values. So uh, we want to add to the vowel list, and of course the first vowel is gonna be A. So now we basically go through the entire alphabet and just say whether or not it is a vowel, right? The next one would be E, etc, etc. And of course, I've already done that, so let me quickly add the rest of those bad boys. There we go. So we have A, E, I, O and U. Now let's do the same thing with the consonant list. And of course that would be DS list add consonant list and the first letter would be the B letter. Let me also copy in the rest of the alphabet just like that. There we go and we have all of our letters available to us. That's just something we have to go through. I don't think you can cycle through the alphabet automatically. Anyways, next up it's time to define a bunch of variables. For instance, we want a variable called name length. I want this to be randomly chosen between three and five letters. So we say choose three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Choose any of those guys. We could also do this with a floor random functionality, but I think this one is just easier, right? Then we also want a number length. We are not going to use this in today's script just yet, but theoretically we would like to be maybe uh, able to add numbers to our names. And this is what this function would be for. So as soon as we expand upon this script a little bit, make it better, we could also add a bunch of numbers. Uh, anything between zero to three numbers, I guess. Or maybe up to five. Why the heck not? Something like that. Next up, I'm also gonna need a variable called 
final word, okay? And final number, I would say. Something like that. Both of those are gonna be strings. And since we are only gonna use those variables in this particular script, I think what we can do is set those guys to var. And this will only allow us to use them in this script as far as I understood it. So we cannot address them from other scripts. So this step, I don't know if it is really necessary. Maybe it will get into our way and I'm gonna end up removing them again. However, with those variables out of the way, let's go ahead and do the um, letter generation, I guess. So, generate letter variables, okay? So, for that, I want to start with a for loop for each the vowels and the consonants. So, for instance, the vowels are gonna start with zero, and then as long as the vowels are uh, smaller than the ds list size of the consonant list. And I've been informed that it is actually better to not do the DS stuff in the for loop, so it doesn't always have to check for the actual value of the list. And we are gonna do this with a variable. So we could, for instance, say variable uh, vowel list size, something like that. And that would be DS list size of the vowel list. Something like that. And then we can use the vowel list size right here. Because it is not a dynamic value, it's always the same value, we are doing it better like this. So we only have to decipher this variable once. So as long as it is smaller than this list, we want to add to the vowel variable here, the v. Okay, now we're gonna actually do an array right here. I want to save all the vowels in a array in a specific order, or maybe in a random order, I'm not sure yet. But basically we say a vowel of v is gonna be ds list find value and we want to find a value from the vowel list and it's gonna be a random value I would say. So now we know how large this thing is, how big the list is. Therefore we can say floor random and then we are gonna go for the vowel list size. So we're basically choosing a random vowel out of the list that we have generated and populated with letters. Now, we want to do the same thing for our consonant list. So C equals zero as long as C is smaller than the con oh man. consonant list size. And then we want C++. And of course we haven't made the list just yet. So let's also create a variable for that consonant list size equals ds list size consonant list. Something like that. We want to add basically the same things. So consonant uh, of C is gonna equal ds list find value of the vowel, no, consonant, consonant list. And I just saw there is missing an L that would have resulted in an error. Anyways, we want to floor random consonant list size, something like that. Beautiful. Great, okay, what we did here is basically with the for loop, populating this array with various randomly chosen letters, here from vowels and here from consonants. So this could also be the first letter B and then the second letter could be B again. It doesn't matter. Each letter has always the same chance of appearing here. And this is what I'm talking about. The consonants should not always have the same chance of appearing. But that is something we can add later on. Now that we have all of the letters somewhere populated in an order, in a randomly chosen order, we want to arrange the letters. So, first of all, I want to make some security measures. For instance, I don't want that more than two vowels appear after each other. So, only a maximum of two vowels or two consonants can be next to each other in a word. If you have two consonants, for instance, the next one is bound to be a vowel. We are also gonna need an additional variable related to that and we are gonna call this vowel reset equals two. So it's gonna be the same number here. The same thing with the consonants. So max consonants equals two and consonant reset equals two as well. Good, now let's define a vowel chance. I would say vowels are approximately maybe 40% of our words. I'm actually not sure, it might be less, it might be more. 
But looking at a word, there is uh, always consonants and vowels all over the place. For instance, right here, you can see never more than two... Oh, well, actually, no. Never more than two consonants are in this list, even in the consonant word. Then if we check this word number, yeah, there are two consonants next to each other, but then uh, followed by a vowel. So I think that is a good rule of thumb, a maximum of two of those guys next to each other. So the vowel chance is going to be anything uh, randomly chosen between 0 and 10, I guess. We could do something like that. Or maybe let's go with more like a percentage number. So 100% uh, is the chance or, you know, anything between 0 and 100%. Next up, I want to create myself another for loop. Let's call this L. The for loop L equals zero. L is smaller than name length and L plus plus, something like that. So now we're basically taking the uh, random number from here, anything between three and eight, and we want to run the for loop this many times so that we can get all of the letters that we need into the word. Now, let's say if, for instance, the vowel chance is smaller than 5, so that would be, or smaller than 50, that would be 50%, right? Then we want the letter of L, so the letter 0, the first letter of the word, we want that to be a vowel L. So the first vowel we have defined in this for loop here. So that means our first letter, letter zero, is going to be a vowel. And that means we want to decrease the max vowels thingy-majingy by minus one. So we know we have already uh, used a vowel, okay? At the same thing, that means we want to reset the consonants. So in case a consonant was chosen previously, it uh, has a decreased number here. And of course, as soon as a vowel comes, we want to reset the consonants. So after the max vowels go down, I want the um, max consonants to be equal to consonant reset, something like that. Great, okay, next up, uh, of course, it could be the case that we reach the max vowels zero, which means we are already at the second vowel. Therefore, we want to say if max vowels equals zero, then we want to make sure that the next time we check for the vowel chance, it's always going to be a consonant. Therefore, we have to say if max uh, vowels zero, we want the vowel chance to be equal to zero, because that means uh, we are going to run a consonant next. No, hold the phone. It has to be the opposite sign. Of course, here I said below 50%. So we have to go above 50%. So I guess vowel chance is going to be 10, which means it's going to be definitely a consonant next. So if max vowels is not zero, then we want something else to happen. And that is to randomly set the vowel chance to 10 again. So we basically do the same thing as above. Here, vowel chance random 100. Oh, 100. I have to remember that. There we go. And this should also be 100. I totally forgot that I now went with, with the percentage instead of just up to 10. Cool. So with that out of the way, we can go to the else statement for this if statement. So if the vowel chance is not below 50%, then we want something else to happen, which would be right here. Because that means we want the letter 1 or the letter L to be a consonant L instead of the opposite, a vowel. Great. Now we can basically do the same thing vice versa. So for instance, max consonants should be minus equal 1 and also the max vowels should be equal to vowel reset, something like that. And if the max consonants equals zero, then we want the vowel chance to be equal to zero and else we want the vowel chance to be equal to 100. No, to random 100. There we go, because if we reach the maximum consonants, we want the next one definitely to be a vowel, otherwise we want it to be randomly chosen. Okay, fantastic. Now we have basically ordered stuff in letters 0 to, I don't know, up to letter 7, depending on the name length. And we are ready to put those guys into order, into a word. So let's say create final word. 
Right here, I'm going to start with a switch statement for the name length. So depending on how long the name is, we want to put together another string. So in case it is three, that is the first condition that I have. I want the final word to be something like a string upper. So it will capitalize the first letter, which is letter zero, of course. Then we want the string um, letter one. Then we want the string letter two. There we go. And after that, we want to break. Let's continue with the next case, which be uh, case four. Final word would in this case be the same thing right here. But of course, additionally with the letter three. So string letter three. There we go and do the break right here. Beautiful. And now we have to do this for all of the variants that we have. And of course, that is how many letters we can have. So up to eight, I will have to do this now. Let me quickly copy this over from the document that I already have. So we're gonna need case five next. Let's actually try to add that right here. Beautiful, look at that. Five, six, seven, and eight. All of the cases are present and depending on which word we have, we are gonna use more and more letters that we randomly put together with the letter variable. Great, okay, let's combine the final name. So for instance, here we could also add a bunch of numbers if we wanted to, but for the time being, I'm just going to add that thing to my global variable list. And for that, I'm gonna address my object core and I'm gonna make a new variable in the object core using this command. I'm gonna set this is equal to final word. So instead of global temp, it's just object core temp. Somebody told me that is better practice. So let's see how that works out. And finally, we have to clean up, of course. So destroy lists. There we go. And the lists we want to destroy, of course, are the vowel list. There we go. And also the consonant list. Okay, making sure that I spell this correctly. Let's go ahead and actually test out the game. We are going to create a new game. And of course I made, look at that, a consonant list. Of course, I always do that. Line nine. So let's check this out. Line nine. There we go. This is the error. Did I do it somewhere else? No, I don't think so. Once again in the game and of course another mistake. On line 36, let's check out what's wrong here. Okay guys, this took me a really long time to figure out, but I know what is wrong with the code. Uh, right here, I'm checking for the vowel list, which obviously is much less than the consonant list. So maybe in certain words, we are actually using up uh, more vowels than we should. And I think the way we can resolve that is just by placing in the consonant list right here instead of the vowel list and possibly also here. Yeah, so we're basically making as long of a list as with the consonants. No, that is actually wrong. We only need to have it right here. The other thing should be the vowel list size right here. Of course, we only want to choose randomly from our vowel list, but we want to make the list as big as the consonant list. And now, theoretically, it should work. So let's start up a new game. There we go. And we have Ursie, we have Invapu, we have Yulea, we have Eb. Uh, we have Loka, we have Yamvatit, etc, etc. You get the basic gist. <laughs> there we go. So this is only yet a first version. We're gonna make improvements on that so the names aren't as hard to pronounce sometimes. But, you know, that's just my idea. Let me know if you have some suggestions for improvements. And other than that, we're gonna wrap up the episode right here. Thank you so much for watching. The script, as usual, is gonna be down in the description. See you soon and have a great time. Bye-bye.